Let's have a look at this 30 amp solar charge controller by Elnex. 12 or 24 volts automatic charging current 30 amps. Max PV input voltage is 100 volts. Maximum PV input power is 440 watts at 12 volts or 880 at 24 volts. All right, we've got an instruction manual. charge controller. Looks like we've got four mounting screws. I don't know, maybe this cover is plastic. Definitely has a pretty good size heat sink on the back. A couple of indicators and three buttons here. MPPT. So you can just open that up and then there's where you've got your screws for those connectors. It's nice, it has all the uh, information right here on the front. 12 or 24 volt, 100 amp input, and it's a 30 amp charge controller. IP43 rated. On the bottom, we've got two inputs for the PV and two inputs for the battery. A place to plug in a temperature sensor, and then some type of a remote. I don't know, it didn't come with any additional equipment. Got a lug over here for your ground wire. All right, these are some nice heavy-duty connectors. These are eight gauge wires. They fit into the connector nicely. And then you've got this rubber cover. It's connected to a 280 amp hour LiPo 4 battery. And then I'm gonna use my benchtop power supply to supply a simulated 24 volt solar array to the uh, MPPT charge controller. So let me turn the battery on. As soon as you turn it on, it goes through its cycle, checking the voltages and so forth. And you can see we've got some icons up here this one indicates the uh, solar and it's blinking because I have no incoming power. This is a battery icon and then a charge level indicator. And you can see that it did have a backlight. So you can just press this button, turn on the backlight, which is real handy. I, I actually really like that feature. And this is a IP43 rated. So it's indoor use only. It's not made for a wet outdoor environment. Then you've got this interface with these three buttons. So you've got the array and then battery. So let's press the battery and it gives you amperage, amp hours, and voltage. Currently the battery is at 13.14 volts. You can use it with eight different battery chemistries. It comes by default on AGM. So in order to change that, you hold this button here down for three seconds. And then you're going to go into the programming section. The first one you come to is uh, setting up the voltage. Now it is an auto detect, but once you're in that programming mode, you can use these two buttons to cycle through the different options. So you have auto, you've got 24 volt or 12 volt, and it flashes on the screen as well. So you could pick 12 volt or whatever voltage you wanted to, and then click the hold button and it goes into the next phase which is selecting the battery chemistry. So we want to select LFP. Hit that one and now we're set up for a 12 volt system with a LiPo 4 battery. I'm going to turn on the bench top power supply and I've got it set to put out 10 amps and about 24 volts. So now we're showing 13.5 volts and now we're blinking it's in the bulk mode illuminated battery icon illuminated solar icon and we're flashing up here so i think i've got about three quarters of a battery charge in there so now you can cycle through using the battery side we've got the 13.53 volts roughly 16 amps going into the battery we've put in 0.23 amp hours and that's going up because we're currently charging you have a charging icon over here and then back the voltage. Now you can click this side for the array and get information about the array. So 23 volts. We're showing about a volt difference what's showing on the 
charge controller versus the uh, bench top power supply. So I don't know which one is correct, but they're both pretty close. Almost 10 amps, 9.98, 230 watts. So it's like we have a 230 watt array connected. Put in 7.3 watt hours and back to 23 volt array. This is where the MPPT is really nice and I think this one is rated, I'll double check the manual, I think it's about 90% efficient. But uh, we're doing 16 amps right now, so we're getting 6 extra amps through the MPPT going into the battery, whereas the array and amperage is only putting out just a hair under 10 amps. So the MPPT works quite well on this charge controller. So that's real nice, you can go array information or battery information and get all the information that you need right off of the charge controller itself. I'm using an SFK 280 amp hour battery and let's just look at the app information and compare it with what we're seeing on the Apex Solar MPPT charge controller. So we're showing 13.34 volts on the battery app, 13.6 on the charge controller. Amperage is 16.5 on the uh, battery app. We look at the amperage on the charge controller, 16.09. So a, a slight difference there, but they're both fairly close. This is showing 223 watts from the array. So let's check the wattage on the array. 230 is what they're showing on the charge controller. So there is about a 10 watt difference between the charge controller's information and the app information on the battery. 10 amps going in and 16.08 amps going into the battery. So that is really cool. Real nice charge controller. I like the, uh, the size, the weight, it feels quite robust. I like the interface and the input, very easy to use and set up. And it is a true MPPT charge controller. So I really like the charge controller. I think it would be a great option. If you want more information about the charge controller or purchase links, I'll put them down in the video description. They sell these on uh, Amazon. And if you're interested in another one of my solar power equipment review videos, click the video on the screen now and we'll see you over there.